In this section we're going to talk about what happens to an engine when you have a runaway. Runaway is a situation where the turbo fails internally and the oil pressure that's sent to the bearing bypasses the bearing and the seal and is actually injected into the intake stream and subsequently gets burned as fuel. This is an extremely ugly situation, okay? Because what's happening inside this engine when you have a runaway, uh, which is initially caused by the turbo failure, which leads to cascading effects, which absolutely destroys every component in the engine. I've seen this problem in the 7.3s a few times, but I've seen it several times in 6 liters, especially performance applications where there's been a lot of heat applied to the turbo and the subsequent seal and bearing failure. And this gentleman has a 180,000 mile truck. Uh, he was a half mile from home and started puking black smoke and he pushed it. It cost him the engine. As you look at the mechanical carnage in this clip, I want you to realize something that's really quite amazing. This engine ran, okay? It ran to his house and then when he got to his house and he called me and I sent the wrecker after it a couple days later it ran from where the wrecker man parked it to the door where we took it apart and started looking at it which was I don't know, 20 yards, 30 yards, but it cranked up and went which is unbelievable to me when you see the type of damage that happened inside of it. Initially we put a new turbo on it and we cranked it and we got it to run it ran real rough, okay, but it ran and we took it up the street just around the corner real short and came back and said there's something seriously wrong with the motor at that point. When we got it back to the shop after uh, you know, changing the turbo and initial analysis and whatnot, we discovered that number eight was dead. So we pulled the injector out of number eight thinking there was a problem or something like this. Maybe some shrapnel or something had gotten in there. But it turned out that the tip of the injector was completely covered with molten aluminum. Had been molten aluminum at some point. So we knew we were in deep trouble at that point. And then we decided to take the motor apart and found what we had here. So let's take a look at some broken parts. Okay, initial failure was the turbo. Okay, as we can see here, the shaft actually sheared off. Uh, the turbo still spins, but it's dead in the bearing. And uh, obviously, uh, there was oil passing past this seal now. Oil gets fed into the turbo from your low pressure oil pump, your actual lubrication pump, because it lubricates this bearing. And instead of the oil just passing through it, it goes by the seal and gets pushed into your intercooler. When we got this truck here at the shop and we were diagnosing it initially, we found that there was only about three quarts of oil left in the oil pan and another good three quarts in the intercooler, which, is, which was kind of amazing that it actually still ran. After we did the initial test and we found that, the, uh, that it was skipping terribly, we pulled the injectors. As we look at number eight injector, we see the tip is completely coated with aluminum. At this point, we were knew we were in deep trouble when we had to disassemble the engine. The injector actually buzzed and everything worked fine, except that the holes, the little orifices that the fuel passes through, are now coated over with aluminum film. This is what the injector should have looked like. Nice, clean tip. That even has a few things on it, but not near as bad as number eight. And you can see number eight again, that it's just flat covered over with aluminum. When we pulled the cylinder heads off, we realized that there was a lot of heat sustained in number eight. Uh, we can see a burnt exhaust valve here, uh, which basically looks like someone took a blowtorch to it. It damaged not only the valve, but it damaged the head also. And when we look at the top of the piston, it's like, oh my gosh, look at the heat that this thing sustained. Okay, it's just incredible. And we compare it to uh, another piston, we can see just how much of area over here on the uh, piston was just torched off. It was just, you know, extreme heat in this area. It's just amazing. And this piston, you see it's nice and square in here. It literally went a good three or four millimeters below the uh, deck of the bore when it was still in the engine. When we took it apart, we found that all the mains and rod bearings, especially towards the rear of the engine, which were the last ones to get lubricated, had not gotten any lubrication. And we had actually started to spin the bearing in number eight, which means that what happens is, is that your bearings will stay in, in, the, in the cap like this, but what happens is when they get dry, they'll actually move inside of here. And this is, this is the, the beginnings of throwing a rod. So when we pulled number eight out, the bearings were no longer in their correct spot. They were actually turned a, a quarter turn uh, inside their respective space.
Okay, this engine was right on the edge of taking a shit. It didn't quite do it. It made it, but it was right there. Lack of lubrication will kill it every single time. When we took the pistons out and actually examined the crankshaft, it was scored pretty bad on the number eight cylinder. Uh, the other journals had some wear and tear on them too from lack of lubrication. And the rear main journal, I'm sure, has started to spin. So now we're looking at a complete engine. I mean, I'm not talking about, oh, we can just do the bottom end, or we can just do the heads, or we can just do head gaskets, or this and that. She's cooked. There's nothing here that can be used. And, you know, even the cam and the lifters, if you've seen a couple of my, my FUBAR uh, series here, you know, I'm not going to use this stuff if it hadn't had lubrication, and especially in an extreme heat situation. There's no component in this engine that can be reused. Uh, uh, it's, it's shot. So now I've got to go find the man another motor, or I've got to build him a motor out of my stack of cores here, uh, and get him back on the road. You know, the thing is, is that he could have saved himself thousands and thousands of dollars in a repair bill if he had stopped the truck at the time, okay? The problem here is, is that you actually start burning engine oil, and uh, I've had a few high performance situations where they've actually started to do this here, and they take off like a jet engine, like whoom, you turn the key off, it'll just keep running. Uh, and luckily we managed to get a shot towel and a, and a couple other things stuffed in the intake real quick. Uh, the turbo was already wasted, so who cares if we hurt it, uh, just got it in there and shut off the airflow and slowed the engine down and it eventually stopped and we managed to save those other two, but this guy didn't know what he was dealing with. It was Friday afternoon, beer was calling, you know, hey, I'm in the fridge, come drink me, and you know, he pushed it an extra half a mile or so he says, hey, you know, I don't, I'm not going to refute the man, but he pushed it. Bottom line is he pushed it and now we have a pile of, of worthless junk here that the scrap man gets, okay? So the moral of the story is don't push it when it's black and smoke, even if the beer is calling. Walk the half a mile. You'll probably enjoy the beer more anyway after you walk the half a mile. Call a wrecker for a couple hundred bucks. It's a whole lot cheaper than several thousand dollars for a fresh engine.